MIA is, and likely ever will be, one of the only true eccentrics to have ever landed in mainstream music. She was one of the first artists who blew up entirely online with a couple singles gathering some attention on MySpace. <laughs> yeah, MySpace feel old yet. She was eventually picked up by XL Records, a label who's now pretty notorious for taking underground acts and turning them into household names without compensating the quality of their art. Her debut album Arular, which is named after her father, laid the groundwork for a sound that was unmistakably her own, combining hip-hop with abstract electronics, politically charged lyrics, and various types of music from around the world. Listen to the reggaeton tinged jab at the music industry on Fire Fire or the Brazilian funk influence Bucky Dun Gun if you want some good examples. MIA has a sound that's super distinct, yet also very eclectic, expanding upon it further with each release, making for one of my favorite bodies of work from any artist. In fact, I could probably make an entire video about why Maya is one of the most important albums of the decade, and yes, I even enjoyed AIM. As much as I, and many others, love MIA's avant-garde yet catchy approach to pop music, it only makes sense that her time in the limelight wouldn't last nearly as long as her time in the underground. There are countless, and I mean countless, bands that broke through into the mainstream via one song or another whose most celebrated material is their less commercial albums. Bands like Modest Mouse, Pavement, and even frickin' Butthole Surfers had a radio hit in the 90s because the decade was just that weird. Oftentimes these hit songs, as enjoyable as they may be, can feel like a compromised take on the band's signature sound and end up insignificant to their discography, despite the commercial success. And that brings us to M.I.A.'s huge 2007 single, Paper Planes, a song that launched her from an acclaimed indie artist to mainstream success, all because of Seth Rogen using the song in the trailer for Pineapple Express. Far from the first, and certainly not the last time a movie turned an already acclaimed artist into a mainstream icon, but that's neither here nor there. Despite the massive acclaim that Paper Planes has gotten over the years, with Rolling Stone naming it the second greatest song of the century, so far, behind Beyonce and Jay-Z's Crazy in Love, WHAT?! I still feel like it's gonna be decades before the song gets the acknowledgement it truly deserves, so we're gonna break it down today. As I was saying earlier, M.I.A. is one of those artists who likes to take a bunch of different genres and toss them into a blender, and then sort of raps over them. Paper Planes, while very much continuing this trend, is by far her easiest song on the ears, and if you had no prior knowledge of M.I.A.'s music and decided to listen to Kala, which is named after her mother, then you could definitely guess that this was the big hit just by hearing it amongst all the other tracks. Despite that though, the song doesn't sound like most pop songs from the 2000s, or really any other era. Instrumentally, the song is fairly simple, building off a Clash sample with a strung out 3 chord lead and backing 8th notes, but what I find most notable about this beat is how influenced it sounds by the UK trip hop scene. It almost sounds like a more visceral, speedier take on a Portishead instrumental, combined with the grooved out yet hip hop inspired rhythms of Massive Attack, all wrapped up in pop sensibility. Considering many M.I.A. songs are largely influenced by music from around the world, it only makes sense that her big hit would be influenced by a movement that was entirely created in her home country. Despite the simplicity, the choice of a more washed out synth sound and the way the slow paced melody plays off of the beat makes it stand out, and still fit into the M.I.A. catalog. In fact, you could even argue that this song defines her better than any other due to its genre fusions, abstract yet catchy chorus, and politically charged lyrics. Speaking of which, let's talk about what the song is trying to communicate. Paper Planes is a clever metaphor for visas, literal pieces of paper that allow you to travel to and from certain countries. This metaphor being the title of the song is perfect, as a paper plane is a physical object that everyone can imagine and relate to, and makes people wonder what a song called Paper Planes could possibly be about. As you delve deeper into the song, it becomes very apparent what she's talking about, with this metaphor perfectly summing up the song's central theme of being fed up with racial prejudice, especially towards refugees. This is elaborated on during the verses, in which M.I.A. sarcastically plays the dangerous refugee stereotype that many government officials and ignorant people reduce these innocent citizens down to. She talks about being a hustler and lethally poisoning the system just by coming into their country despite the fact that she's giving them more work and stimulating their economy. Now, when you hear most politically charged pop songs cross over into the mainstream, many of them can come off as preachy, pandering bullshit that was only made by the artist to get a quick buck off of some suckers who care about whatever cause they're pushing. For as deeply political as Paper Planes is, M.I.A. doesn't present herself as standing on a soapbox and telling the listener how to think. Her going the route of being rebellious and edgy not only allows her to take the topic from an interesting perspective, but perfectly connect with all the young people who listen to pop music, even those who can't relate to her situation on a personal level. She just sounds so cool with her pirate skulls and bones and... This line was so cool it got sampled in a T.I. song. Really the only critique I could maybe throw at the verses is how they aren't really a full 8 bars so much as she says a couple lines and repeats them, but this doesn't really bother me. At the end of the day, it's a pop song, so most people take the lyrics as just a bunch of syllables that they can mouth along to while playing it in their car. 
The verses don't come off as repetitive given the ample amount of time in between where the first line starts and where the first line starts again. Because of this, the repetition really only acts as a means of reinstating the point and helping to catch the lyrics more easily had you missed them before. As well written as this entire track is, the song is mostly well known for uh... This... Chorus... Is... PERFECT! Not only was it weird and different sounding enough to catch on as an internet meme, as all great choruses do, but it does wonders for the song's political overtones. Continuing the rebellious characteristics in the verses, M.I.A. tells us that all she wants to do is rob places and shoot people, which is communicated through literal sounds of guns and cash registers. You could argue that this ended up hurting the song's longevity as a hit, at least in America given the very unfortunate amount of mass shootings, but pretty much everyone I know seems to remember this song very well. Which is kind of nuts given how it's now over a decade old and likely won't be played very often due to the gunshot sound effects. Hell, just a year ago, Childish Gambino's This Is America had its gun sound censored on streaming versions, which, now that I think about it, these two songs actually have a lot in common. Their political themes, production that complements the origin of each artist, and seemingly blissful but extremely aware lyrics and vocal delivery are defining characteristics of each track. If you remove Paper Plane's popularity out of context and just look at it as a song the way the music gods intended, then this chorus still stands as being absolutely brilliant. M.I.A. said herself that where she comes from, gun sounds are a part of our culture as an everyday thing. If you've been exposed to gunfights and violence and bombs and war, then I can use those sounds backing my thoughts, you know? What maybe amazes me the most is how she was able to take these sound effects and make them actually catchy enough to work in the context of a top 4 hit on the Hot 100. It's like she's taking a conventional vocal melody and having it fragmented by the sounds of gunshots and cash registers, almost symbolizing how, where a lot of refugees come from, it's impossible to do anything without being interrupted by gunfire. This hook perfectly ties together the whole song, and is likely the biggest contributor to its longevity. Before I wrap this video up, I want to say that this is all just my interpretation of the song and that the way it's written can be taken in multiple ways. It can be seen as a commentary on gun control sung from the perspective of a gun trafficker, or a commentary on immigration laws inspired from personal experience. No matter what the intended meaning of the song is, I'd love to hear what you guys think of it and if you have a different way of looking at it than I do. I see Paper Planes as a masterwork in self-expression and communicating politics in music. It's subtle yet poignant and wrapped up in the politics is a chorus that's extremely memorable and really boundary pushing for a pop song. Also, this beat was so fire that everyone and their mother rapped over it. I wouldn't be surprised if in another 10 to 20 years the song is viewed as a classic, if it's not already, as no other track has managed to accomplish what this one did, except for maybe This Is America. If you're not familiar with the rest of M.I.A.'s catalog and admire Paper Planes for its bold and off-kilter style, then I'd pretty much recommend all her albums, especially this one. If you enjoyed the video, then you know the drill, and as always, thanks for watching! He got it